in the last lecture we learned about the lexical scoping and what is scope chain so we learned that any function or code block sitting lexically within another scope automatically has access to the variables and functions declared in the outer scope for example in this program this calculate edge function is sitting lexically within the global scope so it has access to all the variables and functions declared in global scope like first name and last name similarly this is full age function is sitting lexically within calculate age function scope so it will have access to all the variables and functions declared in its parent scope that is in the scope of calculate age and since calculate age has access to global variables and functions due to scope chain is full age function will also have access to global variables and functions that's what we learned in last lecture right and the same goes for this if block we have also learned that when a function is called an execution context for that function gets created in the call stack so for example when the student details function is called an execution context for the student details function has been created here and this execution context has a variable object a scope chain and this variable now we learned how variable object is created by the javascript engine now some developers also like to call this variable object as variable environment so both variable object and variable environment are same thing don't get confused if you see you know this term variable environment in some online article or when you hear it in other tutorials both variable object and variable environment are same thing now let's talk about scope chain so a scope chain is a concept which tells to which variable and function the current scope has access to and a scope chain is implemented by something called as lexical environment okay so this scope chain is a concept and a scope chain is created using lexical environment a lexical environment is a structure that holds identifier variable mapping here identifier refers to the name of the variable or the function and the variable is the reference to the actual object this object can be a function or an array or even primitive value during the creation phase a lexical environment gets created for the scope of the current function in creation phase this lexical environment is identical to the variable object that is it also contains all the variables and functions which is declared inside the function of current execution context but this lexical environment gets updated during the execution phase and at that time it contains the variables and functions defined in current scope plus it will also have an outer variable which will point to its parent scopes all right so a new lexical environment is created for each lexical scope but only when the code is in you know when the code in in that scope is executed the lexical environment also has a reference to its outer lexical environment let's understand this with an example in this example when this program will be executed first of all a global execution context will be created for this program right and during the execution phase a lexical environment will be created for the global execution context and this lexical environment will store all the variables which is declared in that scope so in the global scope this first name last name and this calculate age function has been declared so it is stored in the lexical environment of global scope as you can see here and this lexical environment also has this outer variable and it is set to null why is that that's because a global scope does not have any parent scope right so the parent scope for this global scope is null then a scope for this calculate age function will also get created and how does a scope gets created it gets created using lexical environment so in the execution context of this calculate age function during the execution phase a lexical environment will be created and this lexical environment will store all the variables and functions which is declared in that current scope now in the scope of this calculate age function this birth year current year and this age variable is declared and also this is full age function is declared and that's what you will see that it is stored in the 
lexical environment of calculate age function and this lexical environment also has this out of variable and it is referencing to global lexical environment that means this lexical environment and that's why inside this calculate age function we can also access all the variables and functions declared in the global lexical environment because of this reference okay this outer variable here is referencing to global lexical environment and because of this these variables are also accessible inside this calculate age function inside the scope of this calculate age function okay then this is full age function will also create its own scope right so again a lexical environment for this is full age function will also get created and it will store all the variables and functions declared in that scope now in this scope you can see that there is only one variable which is declared and that is this eligible variable and it is stored in the lexical environment of this is full age function as you can see and it is set to undefined why because we have not assigned any value to this is eligible now this is full age lexical environment also has this outer variable and this outer variable is pointing to the lexical environment of all its parent scopes so the parent scope for this is full age function is this calculate age function right so you can see inside this you know this outer variable is pointing to that calculate age lexical environment and it is also pointing to the global lexical environment okay so this outer variable has reference to the global lexical environment that means this lexical environment and also the lexical environment of this calculate age function so that's why this is full age will have access to all its parent scope variables and functions which is here inside which is you know stored inside this lexical environment of calculate age and because of this scope chain it will also have access to the lexical environment of global scope i hope all this is making sense here one thing you must remember here is here we have reference to the outer outer scope variables and functions it is not being copied inside this lexical environment okay it is only keeping the reference to its outer scope then in this program we also have a scope created by this if block okay so a new lexical environment will be created for this if block now inside this if block first we are declaring this message one variable and this message one variable is declared using let keyword okay that means this message one variable is block scoped it will be accessible only inside this block okay so the scope for this message one is this block that's why this message one variable will be stored in the lexical environment of this if block then we have this message to variable this message to variable is declared using var keyword and we have learned in our last lecture that a variable created using var has function scope okay so this message to will not get stored in the lexical environment of this if block instead since it has a scope of this calculate age function it will be stored in the lexical environment of this calculate age function that means inside this lexical environment and then this lexical environment will also have an outer variable which will have a reference to all its parents scope now in case of this if block the parent scope is this calculate age function okay and also this global scope so that's why you can see here we have a reference to the global lexical environment and lexical environment of calculate age function okay so this is how the scope chain will look for this program okay so remember that the scope chain is in javascript is implemented using something called as lexical environment and lexical environment contains all the variables and functions in the current scope plus a reference to its parent scopes now in the last lecture we learned that when we have two adjacent scopes then one scope does not have access to the variables and functions of its adjacent scope okay and in this example 
here this if block and this is full edge are adjacent scopes so two we have here we have two lexical environment for these two adjacent scopes now here this lexical environment will not have access to the variables and functions which is defined inside this lexical environment and vice versa is also true okay so they don't have access to each other's variables and functions one more thing to remember here is that the scope chain only works in upward direction that means a child scope will have access to the variables and functions of its parent scope but vice versa is not true that means a parent scope will never have access to the variables and functions of its child scope for example for this global scope this calculate age function is creating a child scope okay so we inside this global scope we cannot use variables and functions declared inside this calculate age function similarly this is, is full age function will create a child scope inside this calculate age function okay so this calculate age is parent for this is full age scope so we can use variables and functions of its parent scope inside this is full age but this parent scope that means this calculate age function cannot use variables and functions declared inside its child scope that means inside this is full age function okay so scope chain only works in one direction and that is in upward direction it does not work in downward direction keep this point in mind now some of you might ask if the lexical environment contains all the variables and functions which it has access to then how it is different from variable object let's see that so a variable environment stores all the variable declared inside the function for which the execution context is created and we already know that on the other hand lexical environment only contains the variables and functions declared in that scope let's understand this with an example so for this same program when we create a lexical environment and a variable object for this calculate age function in the variable object you will see that all the variables and functions which is declared inside this function is stored inside this variable object and it also includes the variables declared inside this if block okay so the variable declared in the scope of if block so inside this you can see this message one variable is also stored but the lexical environment only stores those variables and functions which is defined in the current scope and not in the current function now in the current scope in the scope of this calculate age function this these three variables and this is full age function is defined this message one is not in the in the scope of calculate age function it is in the scope of this if block it is not in the scope of this calculate age function and that's why it is not present inside this lexical environment of calculate age now why this message 2 is present here because message 2 is declared using var keyword and we learned that a variable declared using var keyword has function scope so this message 2 is defined in the scope of this calculate age that's why it is present inside this lexical environment okay i hope it makes sense here so a variable object will contain all the variables and functions declared in that function okay no matter whether it is declared inside a block or not but a lexical environment will only contain those variables and functions which is defined in that current scope all right so we have seen that the concept of execution context scope and scope chain is very related so before concluding i just want to make sure that you understand how these are related and where is the difference so the order in which the functions are called and executed in the call stack does not determine the scope chain the order of execution and the scope chain are two different things let me explain what i mean here so we learned that the scope chain of each execution context is stored in the execution context object however remember that the execution stack is different from the scope chain in this example when this first function is called it will create an execution context in the call stack and from within the first function we are calling second function so again on top of the execution context of first function 
an execution context of second function will be created because this second function has been called from within the first function and then from within the second function we are calling this third function so an execution context for this third function will be created on top of the execution context of second function but this call stack the call stack which you see here it does not imply that since this third function has been called from within the second function it will have access to all the variables and functions which is defined in that in the scope of the second function that is not true okay similarly the second function will not have access to all the variables and functions declared inside this first function just because it is called from within the first function that is not true okay the call stack the order in which the functions are called is different from the scope chain let's see how the scope chain of this program will look like so the lexical environment of the global scope will contain all the variables and functions declared in the global scope so in this example this variable x and this first and third function is declared in the global scope so this lexical environment contains all those variables and it will also have a outer variable which will be set to null because the global scope does not have any parent scope all right then this is how the lexical environment for the first function will look when the first function will be called so in the first function we are declaring this variable y so it is stored here and the second function is also declared inside this first function so that is also stored inside this lexical environment and it will also point to the lexical environment of global scope right then from within the first function we are calling the second function so a lexical environment for the second function will also get created and inside this function we are declaring this variable z so that will be stored inside this lexical environment and it will also have a reference to the lexical environment of its parent scope in this case the lexical environment of first function then from this second function we are calling this third function okay but this third function is present in the global scope this third function is not defined inside the second function so when this third function is called a lexical environment will be created for this third function inside this third function this variable n is declared so that will be stored in this lexical environment and since this third function is present in the global scope it will have access or it will have a reference to the lexical environment of global scope okay this does not mean here that since this second function has called this third function this third function will also have access to the lexical environment of second function that is not true okay so this is what i wanted to explain here that the order in which a function is called does not determine the scope chain of a program i hope it makes sense here so this is all from this lecture in next lecture we will write some code in order to understand scope chain thank you for listening have a great day